Welcome back to the Holy Comforter Episcopal Church YouTube Bible Study. I'm Jimmy Abbott, the priest here at Holy Comforter, and I have a few thoughts, reflections on the gospel for this upcoming Sunday, which is from Luke chapter 15. It's uh, what I call the crown jewel of the parables, uh, the prodigal son. So you, if you look in Luke chapter 15, at the beginning of the chapter, it says that uh, Jesus was... Um, eating with tax collectors and sinners, and the Pharisees started to grumble about it. And they say that uh, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them, which, I mean, is the good news of Jesus Christ, that uh, Jesus would eat with me and with you um, and welcome us. Um, that really, I think, is the, the whole story right there. Then we get into the, the, the story of the prodigal son. Just a quick reminder, uh, it's a man has two sons. Uh, the younger son says, Dad, you're as good as dead to me. Give me half of the inheritance. Um, and so he gets it uh, and then goes, the younger son goes away. He lives in what's called dissolute living. <laughs> we imagine he probably had a pretty good time painting the town red. He runs out of money. Um, he hires himself out. Um when there's a famine, he's hungry, he comes to his senses and he says, um, I'll return home, I'll confess to my dad, um, uh, I won't expect him to receive me as a son again, but you know, maybe he'll hire me as one of the, uh, the hired hands. He goes home, his father sees him, he runs out to him, the son confesses, uh, the father says, um, let's party, my son's home. During the midst of the party, there's an older son uh, who has stayed behind dutifully with his father. Uh, and as he's walking in, he hears the music. You can imagine that he, he smells the roasting of the fatted calf. Uh, and the older son says, like, what gives? Uh, the hired hands say, well, your younger brother has come back. And the older son is hacked off. And the father, again, uh, comes out of the home and says, you know, please come party uh, with us. And the older son is, he's upset. I mean, here's this younger brother of his who has gone off and wasted all the money. And uh, the older son's like, what, why would we celebrate? There are a few things that um, uh, I really want to point out in this one, uh, this time around, is, is that notice how the father crosses the threshold of his home twice. That he always goes out to meet his sons. He never um, stays um, in the safety of his home waiting for the sons to return, uh, that the father actively seeks out both his sons, which I think is a really beautiful image um, of God. And that's how Jesus has worked in my life, that um, I don't think God has ever expected me uh, to walk in um, hat in hand or, or, or however, um, to God, that God has always actively sought me out and then walked with me back home. That is, if anything, that's been my experience, was my experience of coming home to church. So maybe think about that in the ways, the times that God has reached out in a new way uh, and met you where you are and then brought you home. It's a good lesson for the church that we can't just um, expect people um, to you know, why don't people come to church? Well, that that's not the story. The story is that God is actively meeting people where they are out in the world. Uh, the other thing we have to remember from this, and I think there's just some human wisdom to this, is that it's hard to come home, both for the younger son and the older son. It is always hard to come home. Think of um, coming home after college, Um Think of all the stories of soldiers coming home after war. Coming home is always hard because maybe we've changed or home has changed, uh, that there's always a, a different dynamic, that we can never come home and have it be the same again. And maybe that's just part of the, the wisdom that we can take from this, is never expect that you can go home and for it to be the same, that... Um, that it, it's different now for the younger son. It's different for the older son. It's now even different for the father because both his sons are home again. And so um, maybe this is um, a call for us to be more, to be more flexible, to be more open to change, 
and to remember that um, when people do come home, they will be different and they will change us also. My final challenge to you is in your own uh, prayer life as you're meditating and thinking about this story, uh, I encourage you, rename the parable. You know, I'm, it doesn't have to be the parable of the prodigal son. That's just what the, the publishers of the Bible call it. Um, uh, there's no, you know, Jesus didn't call it that. Uh, so rename it. What would you call it? Um, the parable of the great homecoming, the parable of the two sons, um, the parable of uh, the entitled son, the parable of the generous father. I, I don't know. Think about that. Reflect on it. Um, and um, let let whatever title you come up with it um, speak for you um, as you, as I said, use this in your own devotional life. Again, thank you for joining me. Uh, God bless, and um, I pray that each one of you um, is open to God's call and God's gracious invitation to you to come home.